In this video, we will use ArcScene to visualize LiDAR data, which is covered in Chapter 13 of the book, Working with LiDAR Using ArcGIS Desktop, which is available on Amazon. Let's open ArcScene and add your last dataset. For this exercise, I will add the Hopkinsville, Kentucky last dataset, the water shape file that we created in the Chapter 14 tutorial, adding surface constraints to a last dataset, and the DEM used in the Chapter 12 tutorial, creating a digital elevation model using a LiDAR dataset. First thing you'll notice is that the entire last dataset is visible at full extent, unlike what happens in ArcMap. You will also notice that the Hopkinsville last dataset has populated with several dialog boxes in the toolbar area. If you don't see these toolbars, right click in a blank toolbar area and enable all of the toolboxes except for animation and versioning. The toolbox here, indicated in the red box, is the last dataset toolbar and functions just like the last dataset toolbar in ArcMap with the same symbolization features. The 3D Analyst toolbar in the red box is also used just as we have demonstrated in the Chapter 9 tutorial exploring the 3D Analyst toolbar in ArcMap. The final toolbar we are going to go over is the 3D Effects toolbar, which is here in the green box. This is a toolbar that is used for editing vector files within ArcScene, but for now, this is outside of the scope of this tutorial. Before we proceed, feel free to change any of the symbology or display criteria to whatever works best for you. Personally, I like to change the background scene color from a default white to a light gray, but this is not required for this exercise. Displaying your data as a 10 instead of a point cloud may look nicer for certain data sets, but it will also increase processing time for some visualization adjustments. You may have noticed that the layers displayed appear differently than they do in ArcMap. For instance, in ArcMap, typically the top of the data view or map document is north. Here in ArcScene, that is not always true as we are visualizing 3D data. However, we can set a compass to display in the map document window to help with orientation. You can also change the view in the map document window to two-dimensional as well. To do this, select view, then view settings. In the view settings dialog box, select the option for a directional arrow. A compass or directional arrow will now be displayed. You may have to move the view settings box in order to see this. The compass has three directions north, the thick green line, east, the red line, and vertical in the blue arrow. Now if we change our view in the data set, you will see that the observer and target coordinates will change, as well as our directional arrows. You can navigate your data using the navigation tools on the toolbar, or by using the target settings in the view settings dialog box. If you have the coordinates of a targeted area of interest, you may type those in. Once you have your location typed in, hit apply and the view target should move to that specific location. Now check orthographic 2D view. The data set will now appear as it does in ArcMap with the default orientation of the top of the data set being north. You'll also notice a directional arrow disappears. Select perspective again and we'll be using this display option for the rest of the exercise. Here in the red box, you'll notice the navigational buttons. Some of these you may be familiar with as they are also the same in ArcMap. We will discuss each of these since some of these can be difficult to use. The first button on the far left is the navigate button. Clicking and holding the left mouse button will change the direction that you are viewing the data. Using the mouse wheel, you can zoom in and out of the data set. And using the mouse wheel button and dragging here will allow you to easily pan across the map. The most difficult navigational tool to use is Fly. This tool will enable you to visualize the data as if you are flying throughout the data set. Be sure to read the informational box that opens when you move your cursor over the tool. Holding Shift will maintain a constant elevation while flying, while pressing Escape will immediately stop the movement. When you select the Fly button, the cursor will become a bird. You will notice at the bottom of the table of contents, it will indicate what your current speed is. Before you fly, this will either be blank or say fly speed is equal to zero. Using the left mouse button will increase your speed while moving the cursor will change the direction that you are flying. Use the right mouse button to decrease your speed. To stop flying, decrease your speed to zero or press escape. This tool will definitely take some practice to become proficient, so be patient. It is also helpful to have your directional arrow showing and the view setting dialog box open while using this tool. Frankly, this tool does have a tendency to take a lot of computing power from computers that do not have high-end GPUs. If the display becomes empty, stop moving your mouse and slowly decrease your speed to zero. Eventually, ArcScene will catch up, but it may require you to wait several moments. 
you will notice that arc scene has caught up when the compass and your roll angle and pitch have stabilized. If you have been waiting more than a couple of minutes, you may need to close arc scene and reopen the program. Next we'll go over how to center on target, which allows you to pick a point and place that point within the center of the map document window. Once this tool is selected, click on the map document where you want to focus. This location will now be your center point. It may take a few moments for the new center point to register, so again, be patient. Once it is loaded, you can zoom in and out to that point very easily using the mouse wheel. Zoom to target will zoom to the targeted area, but first you must hit control on your keyboard and the right mouse button at the same time. You will then get the following dialog box. Click on set target and zoom, and then click on the feature which you would like to view. Set observer will allow you to view the data as if you're on the ground at a specific point. To use this tool, select the tool and then click on the data set which you want to view as if you were an observer. The final view button is the AOI tool. You can use this button if you want to display a specific part of the data itself. Once a tool is selected, you'll see a box with stacked cubes on each corner and green arrows along the side. These can be dragged to change the extent of the AOI. You can also click on the center of the cube to drag the AOI cube itself. Once you have your area of interest selected, you can hit enter and the area displayed will be limited to just the area within your AOI. Pressing escape on your keyboard will return it to the full extent. Now that we are familiar with the navigational tools in ArcScene, let's turn on all the layers which we loaded at the beginning of our tutorial. Let's explore the properties of the dataset. Right click on the Hopkinsville Kentucky Last dataset in the table of contents and go to properties. You'll notice that many of the tabs in the properties window are the same as the ones that you would see in ArcMap. You have the same symbology, surface constraints, filter, and display options as we have discussed in the Chapter 7 tutorial, Last Dataset Properties, and ArcMap. There are also two new tabs that you'll see in ArcScene, including Base Heights and Rendering. First, let's open the Base Heights tab. Towards the bottom of the window, Layer Offset governs the distance between the layers in the Map Document window. Changing the offset to 50 will move the layers slightly farther apart. If we change it to negative 1000, the last data set will appear under the other layers. You can change the offset to whatever works best for your particular application. Close the properties dialog box when you are done. Now open the DEM properties dialog box. It also has a base heights tab. Change the layer offset to 1000 and you'll see that the layer offset works the same way for rasters as it does with last data sets. Change the offset back to zero. For now, let's turn off the water vector file and the last data set and reopen the properties for the DEM. Under the base heights tab, check floating on a custom surface. The DEM should populate, but if it does not, select it from the down arrow menu. Select apply. The DEM should now be displayed as if it is a 3D surface. Now turn on the water layer, open the properties for the water layer, go to the base heights tab, click on floating on a custom surface and select apply. The water is now floating at the appropriate areas on the DEM. It's important to note that this is just for visualization purposes, but these techniques can help when editing vectors or when identifying unclassified LiDAR points in ArcMap. Now turn off your DEM and water files and turn on the last data set, go to properties and then rendering. We will not go into depth on this tool, but recall from the Chapter 7 tutorial, Last Dataset Properties in ArcMap, rendering controls how much of the dataset is displayed. My name is Eric, thanks for watching. This video is produced by Virginia View, a consortium dedicated to promoting remote sensing outreach, education, and research, with funding from the American View Consortium in partnership with Virginia Geospatial Extension and GeoTED.